this tutorial deals with something that can happen to your theremin. It can happen over time. That is, in a year or two, you might notice something weird going on with your theremin. Or it can happen because of a change of venue. You take your theremin to someone else's house, or you're doing a performance in some other place, and suddenly you notice that zero beat is unobtainable. No matter how you twist that pitch knob, zero beat just doesn't seem to exist anymore. I'm going to show you two methods of making an adjustment that will remedy the problem. The first method can take up to 20 minutes, particularly if it's your first time ever trying to do it. And the second method usually will only take about a minute or two. But in the interest of keeping this video short, you'll notice a lot of edits, particularly in the first method of doing the adjustment, simply just so to keep this at a reasonable length. Let's get started. We'll look at the theremin itself, we'll look at how zero beat is unobtainable, and then I'll show you the two methods of how to fix it. But before we get into the guts of this, literally, I want to show you what it's like when you can't set zero beat. So I've turned the theremin on already. What would normally happen is, I'm going to turn the amp on, here we go. Now you can hear the theremin. And notice that I've got the pitch knob set in the midnight position. All the other ones are, but that's irrelevant. So, I'm getting our standard sound. I can turn the volume on and off, but watch what happens when I try to set zero beat. All I want to do is try to get the sound to stop. I'm turning it all the way, counterclockwise and clockwise. And there is no position under which I can get zero beat. Quiet. That can be very frustrating if you're somewhere where you're going to play for people and zero beat is unobtainable. And it can happen. It can happen over time. Usually you won't have too much of a problem, but over, a ye over the course of a year or two, that pitch circuit can slip a little bit and give you this kind of difficulty. Whereas when I go from place to place, I frequently have trouble setting zero beat and getting it into a position where I like and can have the most range. Now the time has come to look at two different methods to fix this problem. And the first involves going inside. I'm going to explain these during the second method, but I assume that most of you do not have holes drilled in the top of your standard ether wave. In that case, the only way that you can reattain zero beat is to do the following. First, remove all the screws. There we are. Good. With all the screws removed, you've got to also remove the power source. And that's going to enable you to take the lid off. Don't be afraid. It's usually a little bit of a tight fit, but it will come off. There. All right, we've exposed the interior of the theremin. I'll show you what we're going to be working with in a second. However, this method can take up to 20 minutes simply because it's a little bit of trial and error. The minute you've taken the cover off of your ether wave, you will be able to set zero beat very easily. The problem is that when you put the cover back on, all of your settings are going to change. So the best way to simulate the cover being on as we go through this is to make your adjustment, then take the cover and put it on upside down and make your make another adjustment. You're going to have to go back and forth and back and forth. In the user manual that came with your theremin, you have a component layout of the EtherWave circuit board. And we're going to be dealing exclusively with L6, which is the fixed pitch oscillator transformer. It's here on your diagram, and it's here in the theremin. So now, with the power source in, I'm going to use the alignment tool that came with the theremin and insert 
the hexagonal end into L6, down into the slug. Turn the theremin on, and of course it's going to make noise. Now you're going to be able to see that no matter what I do, attaining zero beat is just impossible. The theremin continues to make noise no matter what position the pitch knob is in. So, using the alignment tool, you can, if you turn it very slightly counterclockwise, you'll hear the pitch go up. Start turning it counterclockwise and you will hear the pitch go down. I'm sure you can hear that. Now the turn that I'm giving this tool is very, very slight. When you insert the tool into the slug, you're going to feel a little bit of light resistance. And I am barely turning the slug. It's a very, very small, minute adjustment. You keep going clockwise until that low frequency just drops out altogether. Here it goes. There we go. Now I'm going to test to see the location of zero beat. With the pitch knob right in the midnight position, zero beat exists about eight inches away from the pitch rod. And if I move my hand back, there's a residual effect there's an area of silence here, and then all of a sudden it starts low, and as I move my hand away from the pitch rod, the frequency goes up also, which you do not want. So now, we're going to set zero beat for the distance that you prefer. I prefer the distance from the pitch rod to be about 16 to 18 inches. I would like zero beat happening about here, at the other end of the theorem. There we go. A little bit better. Made a slightly more of a minute adjustment towards the clockwise direction, and there it is. That's perfect for me. Now it will react from about 16 to 18 inches out, regardless of where I put my hand. That's the first part of this. The second part comes now when you have to simulate putting the cover on. As I mentioned, when you set zero beat for yourself with the lid off, that's one thing. But the minute you put the cover back on, everything changes, as I stated in the intro. Put the cover on, and you can hear the noise again. Now, let's use the pitch knob to find zero beat. There it is, right at the distance that I usually like it. But, the pitch knob is now in about the 3.30 to 4 o'clock position. I would like it here. In order to compensate for that, all I have to do is make a slight adjustment to the slug again. Just turn it slightly counterclockwise, very slightly, and put the cover back down. Let's check the location. Oh, look. It has moved. Now it's just a little bit between like 2.30 and 3 o'clock. So I know I'm going in the right direction. Make an adjustment slightly more counterclockwise. Did you hear the pitch rise? Good. Simulate the cover being on again. Ah, here we go. Now zero beat is located right around the 2 o'clock position. I can still go further. back on, and zero beat is now right around the one o'clock position. Zero beat is now right in the midnight position, just by making very slight counterclockwise adjustments. The final test is to put the cover on completely and test it again. Let's do that. 
now that we have the settings with the cover off, we're going to have to see what happens when you put the cover on for real. So I've unplugged the power source, turned the theremin off. Take the lid, and its orientation is such that if you get it just right, straight up and down, it should slide right on without any problem at all, like this. There it is. Plug the power source back in. And turn the theremin on. As you can see, it's making quite a bit of noise. Let's check to see where zero beat is. Not bad at all. It's right at about the one o'clock position where the knob is. There we go. And it's the distance that I like. You can turn it back to yep, one o'clock. Perfect. About 16 to 18 inches. That, in most cases, is just fine. You can work. Uh, you can work with it just that way. I still, for my own purposes, prefer it in the midnight position. So, in order to make that adjustment, I turn the theremin off, unplug the power source, take the lid off, and make that small adjustment. I can just take the alignment tool and make the most minute adjustment. It's almost like I barely felt how much the slug turned, but I know it did. Power source back in. Theremin on. Who? It fell down. And zero beat is now just a hair off the midnight position. For the purposes of this video, I am done. Let's talk a little bit about the second method of making such adjustments and the holes that you see in the top of the theremin. I know I've shown you that I have defaced my theremin in the first part of this video. The holes that I've drilled enable me to access the transformers without having to take the lid off. We're going to talk about how to drill these holes in terms of their positioning after I show you how quickly you can adjust zero beat. This leads to the transformer that controls the volume circuit and without very much effort at all I can control the response off of the volume loop by accessing this transformer. Here's the access to L6 over here, and I can set zero beat using it. I'm going to turn the theremin on, and once again we see that zero beat is nowhere to be found. There's just, no matter where I, wherever I position my hand, there is no such thing as zero beat. The adjustment is made the same way you did in the first method. Place the pitch knob at around the midnight position. The holes are drilled so that the alignment tool can slip down directly into the slug inside the transformer. And once again, we just turn very slightly clockwise until the sound disappears. Now what you can't see is that I'm holding my hand about 16 to 18 inches away from the volume loop. I let go of the tool to just test zero beat right now is about the 10 o'clock position. For the last 10 seconds I've been adjusting very slightly clockwise and edited it just to spare you these tiny minute adjustments, but at this point zero beat is about 16 inches away in the position I prefer the knob, which is right at the midnight position, because it gives me more leeway when I change locations. Zero B could be located at the 3 o'clock or 5 o'clock, and it could be located at 9 o'clock or 7 o'clock. But either way, it allows me to attain zero B. I'll state right up front that drilling the holes is a bit of a risk, because once you've drilled them, you can't undrill them. However, I've found that making these transformers more accessible has enabled me to make adjustments in a fraction of the time it would take me 
And when I'm in an auditorium or a museum or a library and have to set up quickly, taking the theremin apart and making these minute adjustments is just not an option. I've widened the shot so you can see the extreme edges of the theremin because these are a factor. They measure about a half an inch in width. And you must remember while making your measurements that the case of the theremin, here it is with the front, the back, you have a half an inch thickness of wood that comes out from the flush edge of the back of the theremin, which means any measurements you make from the back, you've got to compensate by adding one half of an inch to your measurements. So we'll start there. Here is L6 again. And I want to measure the distance to the center of that transformer so that my alignment tool can fit right down inside. If I look at it from this standpoint here, sorry about that, there we go, and go right to the edge of the circuit board, which is flush with the edge of the theremin, I can see that my measurement is precisely one and one eighth inches from the center. But I have to compensate by adding another half an inch of thickness of wood that's going to end up out here. So the actual measurement is going to be, I add a half an inch right at the edge of the wood and go to the center of that slug and it comes out one and five eighths inches. It's best to measure from three coordinates to the center of each transformer. So one and five eighths from the back We've added the half inch. The half inch is not necessary to add on the side because it's already here. So I'll go to the center of the transformer, to the edge, it is nine, exactly ten inches. So I have one and five eighths from the back, ten inches from the right, and right at the center of that transformer to the very edge, seven and seven eighths. So, to decrease the risk of a mistake, measure three times. Drill once, place that mark right in the center where all of your measurements intersect and drill. And you do the same types of measurements for the other two holes. You now have two methods of messing around inside your theremin that you didn't have before, that you can use when zero beat is unobtainable. You may have noticed that I revised the video from the first version that was put up, and that's due to a number of inaccuracies that I take full responsibility for, but I owe a real debt of gratitude to Andy Barron at rcatheremin.com. He sent me an email this morning and pointed out some of the inaccuracies and some of the technical terms that I was not quite familiar enough with. That's because I play the theremin. I've tried. I've tried to understand everything about the electronics involved. I have a head for playing, but it really is like studying algebra for me to study electronics. So Andy, thank you so much. I really appreciate how you've set me on the path of righteousness when it comes to getting the terminology correct. And also, Thanks to Uncle Howard Mossman, who inspired me to do this particular video in the first place as a sort of challenge. It was a sort of, would you dare show people getting inside the theremin to fix this problem of, of zero beat and not being obtainable? And I love a challenge. So thank you both. And next time, for my next video, I think I'm just going to play music.